In the adventures of the thin man, Nick and Nora Charles, that sexy and sophisticated merry couple of Dashiell Hammett's novel and subsequent films, drink and quip their way through many a mystery. Tonight's episode, The Case of the All-American Menace, was first aired on Friday, December 1st, 1944 at 8.30 p.m. It was sponsored by Post Toasty Cereal and Maxwell House Coffee. Presenting radio's most popular mystery comedy, The Adventures of the Thin Man, starring Alison Voller and Michael Walner, Knight. And in the apartment of Joan Winslow, an attractive young thing just out of Bobby Socks, Plunger Belson, a husky young bruiser just out of football socks, is talking to someone on the telephone. Yeah, pal. In my opinion, pal, you are the type of rodent that carries the bubonic plague, of which there can be no lore. Goodbye. All right, Plunger. Now come back to the couch and tell me how you carry the ball in the fourth quarter for dear old Ipswich. Joni, I hope you're a female with an understanding personality. What are you mad about? I just spoke to the individual who calls himself Alistair Florentine. Oh, him. I'm gonna kill him! Plunger, you've got to tell me what happened in the fourth quarter. This is no night for romance. I'm gonna murder him. So long. No, Plunger. Don't. Plunger? <laughs> Hello, Nick. Do you remember me? Oh, should I? I'm Joan Winslow. You once got me out of a lot of trouble. Well, I got a feeling I'm going to regret that. Uh, of course I remember you now. Uh, Joan Winslow, uh, come in. Who is it, Nicky? Joan Winslow, darling. I, uh, see you're in your pajamas. Were you sleeping? No, don't let the pajamas fool you, Joan. Is that real hair you got on your chest? No, I buy it by the yard from Macy's. Is that what you came to ask me? Well, of course not, you silly. I'm just nervous. You see, it's about a man. What do you want to do, marry him? No, kill him. You, you, you mean murder? Well, what else would I mean, Goofy? Now, how can I kill him without getting into trouble? Are, are you kidding? No, it's Alistair Florentine. The decorator? Yes. You know him? Uh-huh. He's a heel. But why do you want to kill him? Because he wants to marry me, and his personality doesn't appeal to me. Well, that's a brilliant reason. Look at me. Do you think I could drive a man wacky? Can I pass as a femme fatale? Well, you'd be sort of a femme fatale junior grade. What's that got to do with it? I could stab him in the back and clean self-defense. Or, or maybe I ought to use a gun and some arsenic. Nick, what do you recommend? Look, Joni, with me, sleep is a major occupation. Now, you go back to your kindergarten and leave a tired old man alone. You think I'm joking? Well, aren't you? No. Joni, I'm going to talk to you like a father. Um, come here. Sit on my lap. All right. But are you going to be a papa or a sweet daddy? Joni, where do you pick up such ideas? Well, ever since I got out of mini boxes and into high heels, all the men want to talk to me like fathers. Well, this one is going to act oh, like one. What are you doing? Turning you over into the official position for spanking. No. Yes. Ooh. That's for getting weird ideas about murder in your head. Oh. That's for waking me up. And even worse, this is for getting me out of bed. Ooh, Nikki. Hello, dear. Nikki, you spilled that girl all over your lap. Hello, Nora. What was he doing to you? Spanking me. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. My feelings are hurt. Okay, now, Joni, on your way. A and you'd better forget about murdering anyone. Now, scat. All right. But you'll be sorry if I make a mess of this murder. <laughs> Uh, can't you? Oh, dear, I'm very busy dancing with Cary Grant. Oh, nuts. Hello. Hello. Nick, did I wake you up? 
No, not at all. I'm talking in my sleep. This is Alistair Florentine. Florentine? Uh, haven't you been murdered yet? Uh, how did you know? Uh, never mind. Uh, what is it? Just that. Somebody wants to murder me. Who? Well, there are oodles and oodles of nasty people who hate me. Some of them are my best friends. Nick, what's the best way to fool a murderer? Listen, Florentine, I I'm not the dear Abby of criminology. Where did people get the idea of bringing their murder problems to me? I'm just a well-to-do bum living on his wife's income, and I'd like to sleep. Really, Nick? You wouldn't like to see me killed, would you? For free, yes. If you're charging admission, no. Now, now Nick, I know I'm obnoxious. Oh, oh. Florentine! Florentine! Hello? Hello? What happened, dear? Alice Florentine was just bumped off, I think. Oh. Well, that'll teach him not to call in the middle of the night. Nick, isn't he the man Joni wanted to kill? That's right, baby. W wait till in your woolies. We're going to his apartment. Oh, I do wish people would get bumped off before we go to sleep. Come in, Nora. Hmm, it's dark. Where's the light switch? Here, I got it. Oh, there he is, Nick. Bleeding all over his Chippendale table. Yeah, shot in the back. Somebody took this joint apart. Wonder what they were looking for. Do you think little Joni killed him? I don't know. I thought the spanking made an impression on her uh, uh, mind. Nick, you're not going to find a killer in that desk. No, but I think I found a secret drawer. Maybe I can open it. Darling? Did you ever have a queer feeling that you were being watched by unseen eyes? Not since we used to neck in the living room near Aunt Agatha's house before we were married. Hey, I opened it. The bulb in this lamp is still warm. Darling, I, I've got a feeling the killer's still here. Hey, Nara, look at this stuff. Here's a doctor's prescription for some sort of poison. And hey, why'd you turn the lights out? Well, I didn't. <laughs> Fresh corn flavor is what you get. Toasty is crunchy as crackling as jet. That's why post toasties happen to be just a little bit better than any other corn flakes happen to be. Post toasties corn flakes come to breakfast crackling with fresh corn flavor. And now, to return to tonight's adventure of the Thin Man, we find Nick and Nora holding down the floor of Alistair Florentine's apartment. Someone who had been concealed there turned out the lights and fired at them. Nora, are you all right? Uh-huh. I guess whoever fired at us got away. Yeah, looks like it. Why'd you scream? You pushed me down and I bumped my curves. Did you see who went out that door? No, darling, your heel was in my eye. Uh, turn on that lamp. Mm-hmm. Look, Nora, the closet door near the light switch is opened. That's where the killer hid. Well, aren't you going to go out and find the person who did it? And get shot at again? And besides, I want to finish going through this secret drawer. Will you, uh, look around the rest of the joint? All right, dear. What else is in the drawer besides that poison prescription? Clippings about a wealthy Mrs. Gardner who was held but never tried for poisoning her husband in California. Uh, wait a minute. There's something else. What, dear? A, a letter signed by Richard Belson, the, the, the stockbroker. Oh. It's a confession that Belson embezzled funds that belonged to his clients. Darling, don't you get it? Alistair Florentine was a blackmailer. He evidently made quite a business of it. Was he ever on the football team of Ipswich College? Well, I hardly think so. Why? Because I found a little gold football here. The name Plunger is engraved on it. Also the date, 1940. Huh. Did you find anything else? Mm-hmm. This necklace. It has a locket on it. Joan Winslow's name is on the locket. People certainly seem to be losing things around here. I'll take that. 
Hello. Hello. This is Olga. Hello, Olga, darling. How are you? Who is this? Alistair, of course. Whom did you think? No, you are no Alistair Florentine. He always calls me double vodka because I am such hot stuff. You are Nick Charles, no? Yes. Alistair is dead, no? Yes, murdered. How did you know? Olga knows. You found a prescription, no? Yes. Who told you? Olga knows. Do you? Yes. I tell you what that prescription means. I tell you who killed Florentine. No. Yes. You seem to know everything that's going on. Olga knows. You seem to. Come to apartment 8B, 999 East 89th Street at once, and I will tell you, no? Yes. I'll be there. Who told you I was here? Olga knows. Goodbye. No? Yes, goodbye. Uh, that was Olga, dear. Listen, I'm going to meet her. Will you go see Joni and find out what her necklace was doing here? You sound like you're trying to get rid of me. Suppose I go to see Olga. Oh, swell. Then I'll go see Joni. I got a good mind to give her another spanking. Uh-uh. You sound too anxious to see Joni. I'll see her. I'd much rather you see someone you don't know quite so intimately. Hello there. Anyone home? Olga? Nick Charles? Yes. Where are you? Here, in bedroom. Come in. Hey, there are no lights on in here. What's the idea? I find it better to do business in dark. Where are you? Right here, behind you. Oh. Would that be a gun you're poking into my back? Yes, Nicholas. What are you? A Russian she-wolf. Uh, don't look now, but one of your arms is crawling around my neck. Yes, it makes it easier to get into your pocket. Do you have any objections? Yes. <laughs> Can't you pick my pockets without tickling? Oh, I am sorry. Perhaps this will make you more comfortable. Oh. Are you unconscious? Yes. You must be very hot-blooded man. It takes you so long to go out cold. But I fix it. Uh. Better? Better. Joni, where have you been? No, oh, you ain't Joni. No, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Isn't Joni home? No. Oh, well, I'm Nora Charles. Uh, you better come in and wait for her. Well, who are you? Joni's boyfriend? I guess so. We prefer to think of each other as uh, soulmates. Uh-huh. It's all on a very elevated basis? Yeah, too elevated. What's the matter? You having troubles? Well... Look at me. Do I look like a guy who's easy to twist around your little finger? If my little finger were a steam shovel, it'd be a lead pipe cinch. Well, Joni can do it. She makes me do anything she wants. Makes me feel like a big dope. Maybe you should be firmer with her. How? Well, be tough. Menacing. Me? Uh-huh. Haven't you ever been menacing in your life? Oh, uh, not with girls. When, then? When I was playing football for Ipswich College. Football? Ipswich? Yeah, I was an All-American back. Fifteen. Hey, you know, maybe if I got into my football mood, I could handle her. Well, why do you want to handle her? Well, take like now, for instance. She shouldn't be out traipsing around. She should be here, home. <sighs> hut one, hut two, hut three, hike! What on earth are you doing? Getting into my football mood. Do you know Alistair Florentine? Yeah. Why? Do you have a little gold football with the name Plunger on it? I used to. Plunger's what they called me. Plunger Belson. Belson? Well, what's so amazing about that? Everybody has a second name. Are you in the stock brokerage business? No. My dad is a broker. Hey, what are you up to? Oh, nothing. Don't kid me. You didn't come here for nothing. 
This has something to do with that rat Florentine. Well, I'll explain when Joni gets here. Now look, my dad is a very sick man, and if you or anybody else tries to make trouble- Oh, please, please, Plunger. You'd better go back to worrying about how to handle Joni. Uh, okay. You know, if I had someone to tackle, it would put me in just the right mood. Hmm, I'm sure it would. Uh, uh, what are you looking at me that way for, Plunger? Uh, don't you run at me! <laughs> I'm gonna tackle you! Oh, good gravy, no! By golly, yes! No! Ah! <sighs> What's the matter with you, Plunger? You lost your little mind? You know something, you do. You know all about my dad and Florentine, don't you? Well, suppose you untackle me and let me get off the floor. I don't like conversations on a low level. You won't get up until I squeeze the truth out of you, and I mean it. Plunger, you sure worked up a swell menace now. That tackle did. Nora? Oh, hello, Joni. Nora, what have you done to my Plunger? Hello, sweet. Plunger, what was she doing to you? Don't you worry, Joni. He didn't fall for me. He was just showing me how he makes a flying tackle. <sighs> Oh, when Plunger talks about football, he gets impulsive like that. Did he hurt you? Well, there's one thing I'm sure of. Football isn't my game. Oh, ow. Nora, what are you doing with my purse? Getting out this gun, Joni. I thought it looked kind of bulky. Get him up, both of you. Now, Plunger, suppose you tell me how you and Joni killed Alistair Florentine. Oh, call off the Cossacks. Are you feeling better now? What? Who are you? Laura Marshall. I live here. Where's Olga? I don't know what you're talking about. I just found you draped on my bearskin rug, unconscious. I bet you were surprised. Uh-huh. I don't like men when they're unconscious. Who are you? Nick Charles. Nick Charles? Oh, Alistair told me he was going to call you. Uh, do you know Alistair Florentine? Yes. Did anything happen to him? He was murdered. How well did you know him? Oh, too well. What happened here? A gal named Olga phoned me told me to come here and said she'd tell me who killed him. Olga, hmm? Do you know her? Yes, but uh, how much did you find out about Florentine? That he was a blackmailer and an all-around jerk? Well, it looks like little Olga's trying to get me into trouble. She was one of the women he blackmailed. There was some suspicion that she killed her husband with poison. Wait a minute. I had a prescription that could send her... It's... it's gone. Olga stole it. And the other papers are here. Do you have a letter written by Richard Belson, the broker? Yes, here it is. How do you know about it? Belson wrote that letter years ago to his partner. The partner refused to prosecute and gave Belson a chance to repay that money. It was paid back every cent hmm. before the partner died. How'd Florentine get the letter? I don't know, but I do know he was using it. You see, Belson has a son, a football player named Plunger. The old man is very sick, and Florentine thought that this would be a good time to hit the son. The shock of a scandal like this would kill the old man. Florentine was a sweet thing, wasn't he? He knew his way around. Why are you telling me this? Well, I'm not dumb. You'd find out anyway. Look, I'm trying to help you because I figure you'll keep quiet about me. Is it a deal? Maybe. How about helping me some more? Anything you say. Come with me. Where are you taking me? To see my wife and a junior femme fatale named Joni Winslow. Lay that pistol down, babe, lay that pistol down. Pistol packin' mama, lay that pistol down. Hello, Nick. You came just in time. Joni's confessed to killing Alistair Florentine. Joni? What made you do it? Well, Alice was in love with me, and he threatened me with all kinds of things unless I married him. Then tonight he got fresh and broke my necklace. So I killed him with the gun Nora's got, and Plunger's football was on it. On the necklace, I mean. He gave it to me for a present, 
Not the necklace, the football. See? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, uh, let's see the gun, Nora. Well, this gun hasn't been fired since 1902. There's cobwebs in the bell. Look. Oh, gee. I knew I should have cleaned it. Why did you lie, Joni? To cover plunger? Yeah, Nora. You see, earlier tonight, I said I was going to kill Florentine. He was trying to blackmail me into giving up Joni because he was in love with her. He had a letter my father wrote years ago. I know all about that letter. But I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. He wasn't home when I came to murder him. I know you didn't kill him, Plunger. Olga did. Tell us how you did it, Olga. Uh, are you talking to me, Mr. Charo? Yes, you're Olga. <laughs> you're crazy. I checked with the elevator operator. He saw you enter Florentine's apartment. He saw you leave after you shot him. You stole that prescription because it proves you murdered your husband in California. You can't prove that. Every word of it. In fact, Florentine gasped your name into the telephone receiver when he was talking to me. You know you should never kill a man when he's on the phone, Olga. It interrupts the conversation. Get him up. Don't move, any of you. A gun? Without cobwebs? Yes. And if you... Ah! Ah! ah what a tackle. Just like in that game against Harvard. You're getting very good at tackling women, Plunger. You knocked her out. And look what fell out of her figure. The prescription. Nick, you never told me that Florentine said her name on the phone. He never did. Darling, you're wonderful. Oh, I don't know, baby. Any experienced husband could have pulled the same trick. What's an experienced husband got to do with it? Well, he too knows how to tell the right fibs at the right time. Everywhere in the USA, people like the new Instant Maxwell House. It's the most happy flavor, deep and hearty flavor. It's the most happy flavor in the USA. Those famous flavor buds of real coffee are now bursting with new fresh roast flavor. Flavor you can smell in the new aroma, see in the deeper color. It's the most happy flavor in the USA. New Instant Maxwell House. And now for the solution of tonight's Thin Man Adventure. All right, darling. I know how you eliminated Joni, but how'd you eliminate Plunger? Well, I figured that the dame who phoned us at Florentine's was the killer. She knew entirely too much about what was going on, but she fooled me by getting rid of her accent and offering to help me. Her object was to pin the job on Plunger after she got that prescription. And when the prescription was stolen and not the letter Plunger's father wrote, you suspected her. Uh-huh. Oh. But there was always the possibility that she wasn't Olga. So I lied right to her face, accusing her. She, like many another amateur murderer, was under a tough nervous strain, and she pulled the gun and gave herself away. Mm-hmm. I never knew you were such a wonderful liar. Did you really spank Joni when I came in on you? Of course, dear. Don't you believe me? You're too good a liar. You never spanked anyone before. I don't think you even know how. Oh! Well... Believe me now? Yes, dear. Good night, Nikki, darling. Nick and Nora Charles were played by the real-life married couple of Michael Wolner and Allison Bowler. Julie Hurt was Joni Winslow, and Michael Rogan played Plunger Belson. The dual roles of Olga and Laura were played by Jessica Burkhart, and Matthew J. Wilkes was Alistair Florentine. In lieu of paid advertising, we're relying on the generosity of our listeners to continue producing vintage radio mysteries. So if you enjoyed this performance, Please spread the word to two or three hundred of your closest personal friends and encourage them to visit this site so they can share your experience.